Welcome to Timberwolf Church's Faith University. The title of this lesson is Christ, Our Only Foundation. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We honor you on today, Father. We thank you, Father, for being our foundation, for being our base, Lord Jesus, just for being so solid in our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and all that you're doing. We thank you and we praise you and we lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture lesson text in this um, today's lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 23. The golden text comes from verse 11 in the scripture reads, for no, excuse me, for other foundations, for other foundations can no man lay than what that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Let me read it again. For other foundation can no man lay than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The time of this lesson was about 55 AD, and the location is Ephesus. In today's lesson, Paul expounds on what it means to live with Jesus Christ as our only foundation. As we serve the Lord, we are building on his church, which is the holy temple of God. As we build, we do not dare build with anything but our best efforts and resources. We are building to the glory of God himself. So we can't take this lightly. This lesson is broken into four, three sections, excuse me. Foundation of the church, the temple of God, strength of wisdom. The first section foundation of the church begins on verse 10 and the scripture reads according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and the and another build upon excuse me another thereupon but let every man take heed how buildeth thereupon Paul had just stated that we are God's fellow laborers and God is the building, back in verse 9. Using the building analogy, Paul goes on to explain his role as a church leader was to lay foundation. Paul laid the foundation by proclaiming Christ to them by teaching the essential truths about Christ. Apollos was a powerful leader of God's word and came behind and built upon the foundation that Paul had already laid. Paul was careful to note that all of this is done by the grace of God. We are fellow laborers and must be taken and must be careful to be faithful to the work of the Lord. Verse 11. Other foundations can no man lay than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We talk about this verse because it is the um, golden text. And in this verse, we see what is const when construction on a building begins, only one foundation is laid. There's no need for multiple foundations. The entire structure is built on one foundation. And what Paul is speaking of, the foundation is Christ Jesus Christ. As Christians, we have no other foundations other than Christ. He is the one the church is built upon. In verse 12, it reads, Now, if any man build upon his foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Now that the foundation is laid, it's time to build upon it. Christ is our foundation, and he has given life on the cross and has been risen from the dead. These facts are all essential to, a Christ, to the Christian doctrine and practice. The foundation can only be laid once. That's why there's only one foundation. Our current and future work is being constructed 
and finished by the work of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Strength and beauty of any structure depends on the quality of the materials. This is where we come in to play. The quality of the materials. Where there's only one foundation, many, many materials are being used to, um, in the construction. Some materials are better than others, while some, therefore, excuse me, some materials will last longer than others during the test of time, during, test, during the test of time. Paul uses some examples of unperishable and perishable materials to show us how Christians have have no other foundation than Christ, which Jesus Christ is the church is built upon. Paul uses examples of imperishable and perishable materials to show us what is needed for Christian works. His examples of imperishable materials are gold, silver, and precious stones. These items are costly and calls and calls for skills and patience when uses it. Verse number 13 reads, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it, it shall be revealed by fire, and fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. When we look at the scripture, every person must be careful as to what kind of building materials he uses to build upon the foundation for his work will be evaluated. Okay, this matter is not, we're not, com we're not comparing what other builders are using to see who did best, but rather to determine the level of our faithfulness and the love for God. Some Christians work diligently and use imperable materials. In this scripture, the day refers to the day when fire of judgment will be applied to all of our works. This will not be the final day of judgment in store for unbelievers, but it will be an assessment of our works in of our works on the, in this life. Silver and gold, precious stones will survive the fire, but wood, hay, straw will be consumed, leaving the builder with nothing to show for the works that he has done. Scripture um, 14 reads, If any man works abide which he had built thereupon will receive an award. Those works that survive the fire of judgment will be rewarded for their service. The foundation is eternal, that's for sure, and will be not be it will not be affected by the fire. But our work, of course, will be subject to the fire and to open judgment. For those who take the time to use imperishable materials will receive the award or a award. They took the time to serve God and their hearts regardless of trials, persecution that resulted from it. Verse 15 reads, If any man shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. We look at the scripture, those who use perishable materials will be saved so by fire because of their faith in Jesus Christ, but they'll have little reward for their service. Those who trust in Christ are spared from God's judgment, but God will evaluate his, the works for his, the works, will evaluate our works. Salvation comes from grace through Christ not by works. And you can find that in Ephesians 2, 8, 2 and 8 through 9. Salvation is based on is based on faith in Christ's works, while the reward depends on how well we follow the Spirit leading our lives in Jesus Christ. It is important that we do not be confused about this. The next section, God's temple, which starts off in verse 16 and the scripture reads know ye not that we are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you in the scripture um we read the temple 
In this scripture, we see the temple stood in Jerusalem when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians in AD 55 and was not destroyed into 70, um, AD 70, which was 15 years later. It was still the most impressive physical structure in Israel and was very important to the worship lives of God's chosen people. It has always been the place where God's presence resided on earth. Nat the natural temple changed, however, after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit filled the believers who gathered in the upper room. This fulfillment of Christ's promise to send the Holy Spirit to his followers, which can be found in John 16, 7, Acts 1 and 8. Because of the Holy Spirit is in our the Holy Spirit lives inside the believer. The New Testament temple is not a building, it is the living church. It is us, the believers. In verse 17, if a man defiles the temple of God, him shall be shall destroy God. Excuse me. Verse 17 reads. And verse 17 reads, if a man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God, which the temple of God is holy, which the temple ye are. In this scripture, we see the temple of God is where the presence of God resided in the Old Testament. The New Testament era, as we live in today, the spirit of God no longer resides in a building. The spirit of God resides in those who believe in Jesus Christ and together are the church. Here, Paul issues a warning, a stern warning to anyone that will bring harm to God's temple. To do so, they will be destroyed by God. God's temple, which is, which is his people, is sacred to him. No matter what happens in life, justice is sure. Justice is sure. As we move on to the third section, strength and wisdom. We start off in verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that may be wise. When we look at this scripture here, when people think more of themselves or more of their opinions than they do in God's word, they're deceiving themselves and moving themselves away from biblical truth. That's what Paul is saying here. It is much better for them to become an actual fool in order to find true wisdom. Verse 19, for wisdom of the world is foolish with God, for it is written, he who take wise in their own craftiness. In this scripture, Paul warns us sternly to not deceive ourselves. It is wrong and dangerous to think that we can replace God with our own opinions or theories or any of that other stuff. Wisdom of the world is foolish to God. As we drop down to verse 20, it reads, And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. In the scripture, Paul quotes two Old Testament texts to support the content of what that God reigns supreme over the thoughts of the opinions of man. The first one you can find in Job 5 and 13, and the quote is, God catches the worldly wise in their craftiness. And the second comes from Psalms 94 and 11. God knows the wisdom of the world is vain or it is empty. As we go to verse 21, it reads, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. In this scripture, since God considers wisdom of the world to be foolish, it is terrible to boast in men before God. After all, the world's thinking is foolish. So why would we boast in 
in other men or other worldly things? What is the reason for boasting? This points back to Paul's previous command to not boast in the presence of the Lord and that if we do boast, boast in the Lord. And you can find that reference in chapter 1, 29 through 31. Verse 22 reads, Whether Paul or Apostle or Cephas in the world or life or death or these things or things to come are all yours. When we look at this scripture, we read, this is also the way the church should not divide. This is a way the church should not divide over favorite leaders or favorite preachers. Um, neither Paul or Apollos, Peter, or anyone else had a special key to the truth than the other one. Paul is saying here, we all preach the same truth. We're all one. It takes all of us that's building upon the foundation that God has already laid. So we shouldn't hold favorites and anything, whether it's life or death or things present or things to come. We're all building on the same foundation, which is Jesus Christ, who delivered us from the, he delivered us from our sins and our bondage to sin. When we go to verse 23, it reads, and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. When we look at this scripture, there's only one gospel, but many proclaim it. We receive we receive Christ because we trust in him to forgive our sins, to give us right, his righteousness, to lead and to follow us. Uh, this can only be done because of the power of the cross and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. When we, we think about today's lesson, we're reminded that Christ is the believer's only foundation. Christ is the believer's only foundation. There's only one foundation, not multiple foundations, and that is Jesus Christ. When we, we try to, we, with the principle of today's lesson, is to understand that there's no other foundation. Paul wants us to understand that there's only, there's only one foundation. And how can we apply this to make sure that we're building on only Christ's foundation? And we must realize that the church is God's holy temple. We must rely, we must rely on the foundation. We must not rely on the human wisdom, what man says or anything outside of what Christ is saying to us. We must employ all good things that God we must report all good things that God has provided for our ministry to the glory of his holy name. We must use good materials, good resources. Our efforts must be good and holy. And we're building upon the foundation. We can't go cheap. We cannot go. We need to go with materials that's going to last. And that takes good foundation. That takes not good foundation, but that takes, um, what am I trying to say here? That takes materials that's going to last. So we just thank you for this lesson the Lord laid out. It made it very plain and easy for us to understand. And we are honored that he took the time out to explain this lesson to us and, and made it plain for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. Lord, we honor you today, Father. We thank you for the foundation, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that we're living in, we are the church and we are the holy temple and we must not defile it in any way. Thank you, Father. We thank you for, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, how you have brought this lesson to us, Lord Jesus. And we know that our works are will be graded at some time, Father. We will be graded, Lord, and we want to be, we want to withstand your fire. So we thank you on today in this lesson 
and reminding us, Father, we thank you for another chance and another opportunity to get it right. We praise and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.